Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Russ here from Porker's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here that nobody dares say. Uh, we're just waiting for Smido to uh, to log in. Uh, Nottingham kid, he lives out in uh, out Wigan where I think now. I've been to his house a good few years ago. So he works in horse racing industry. Uh, he's into all that kind of thing, so... More Kevin's line than mine, horse racing. I'm not a uh, horse racing man or a greyhound man, but if I get any tips, I always put them on here for my followers. Uh, so, yeah, Smino's all right. You might have heard him before. He goes up Boxing Asylum every now and then. He blows a bit of steam off. He's not a regular on here, but uh, he's a good pal. And I keep in touch with him. He, uh, I think he used to go to the same gym as Frotch when they were kids, Lee Wood and them. He does a bit of training, Smino, so... Not wrong with that. I've just been out and done a run myself, myself this morning. Pissing it down, it was. <laughs> so, let's see where he is. Uh, send him a screenshot thing. All right, Smith, old lad, I'm on. You ready, kid? Uh, for those of you that are like our sister channel, it's Porky's International. Feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment on there. How are you doing, Adam Smith? <laughs> All right, Porky. I haven't been on Zoom for, for a good while. I'll try and put my video on that. There we go. There we go. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Looking well, looking good, Nick. All right. I've just been to the gym now, yeah? Boosh! I don't need to get that kid, man. I'm the fucking main man for 54. <laughs> hey, Porky, you look, you look looking fantastic at 54. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's... Uh... Do you know what I've discovered, Smith, about training? And Mickey Fio told me this a long time ago. It's about eating what you eat, you know. It ain't about, you know, we all train hard, don't we? We've got gym and that. And you just ruin it. You go on and eat all the wrong foods, don't you? So if you eat right, it, it, some, even like milk in your tea, cut that out, cut all the red sauce, brown sauce, all that kind of thing out. I like to have mustard. And if and if you do it for a week and see, it's unbelievable what you can do with your body, in it. If you want to cut body yeah. fat and stuff. So yeah, right. well, I've never really... Uh, named the eating side of it but um but yeah that is where the uh, that is where the magic happens for sure do you remember i remember coming to your house and you uh we went out for a bite to it and i said what are you doing tonight then you had a uh, big uh i've got one of them you know slow cookers you have one of them on job didn't you yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah all yeah. that now just put it on and then it's done in it yeah yeah you know what yeah. i mean eating healthy and that. i've cut all them takeaways and that i used to live on them when i lived at Cunningsborough. Ten years every night, every night, seven nights a week, mate. No, 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 no. And you no. slowly killing the sense, but uh, but yeah, because I'm I'm pleased with how my train is going. That was an hard one this morning. Did you do running? No, I've, I never do because of my knee. But I do boxing. I do plenty of boxing outside with my with my old hat. Yeah, habits. Um, it wouldn't be very pretty to to look at, but get a good sweat on. Yeah, that's it, mate. I'm I'm saying when you get a sweat and it don't matter, it don't matter. But I'm trying Correct. to running out and do uh, more bike riding, but I don't think you get much respect on roaders if you're biking it. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you know no, that's I mean? true. But uh, but anyway, uh, there's a lot gone on. Uh, yeah. In boxing recently. Oh, first of all, how's your how's your young how's your young and doing? All good. Yeah, all good. Oh. Um, at school, school now six. We're going to the Forest game tomorrow. Um, Forest against Fulham. So looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, back into the football. Um, and I haven't really been watching a lot of boxing, as you know, Porky. Yeah. Um, more looking, at, more looking at the racing and that. But yeah, um, obviously, like like a lot of people tuned in last week and was, um, you know, enjoyed it. Good fight, good fight, as it, yeah. as expected, really. But it's just the aftermath that we have to deal with, as you know, as yourself as hardcore boxing fans. The aftermath is uh, somewhat uh, the interesting part, isn't it? Yeah. Uh... Obviously, we know how the fight went. How amateurish was uh, mm. Big Meech on the night, uh, Smidal? Very much so, but, you know, it's as we've said for a long time. We're not being clever after the event. I've been on Porky's Corner before saying that Anthony Joshua is in entertaining fights. Yeah. Um, many people think that he talks well. He's a marketeer's dream. He's the face oh. of Lucas Aid, Under Armour, Sky, DAZN. But he's never actually been that good. No. Which is fine. Not everyone can be undefeated, uh, you know, world champions. But he's never actually been the number one in the division, um, and he's never actually been that good. He's been vulnerable. He's been a completely different fighter since that night in New York against Andy Ruiz. Very much um, 
safety first, um, which the safety first angle has waned over time. If you remember the Ruiz rematch, he was very, very safety first. That was a boring, horrible fight to watch. And then over time, as his confidence has built, and he's not been beaten in, in the interim badly, mm-hmm. um, he has he has you know gone back to the, somewhat of the old ways, the de- the destructive ways that we saw against Dylan White and before and and before. But he is still very vulnerable. And Daniel Dubois, as we've known for a long time, can bang. It's as simple as that. Daniel Dubois is a very, very powerful puncher. They've always said that about him. Um, so I actually backed Dubois to win. He was around seven to two um, in the betting. Um, I thought that was decent value, um, and he got the job done. But yeah, people reading a lot into the the ring walks and his demeanour and his talking in the corner. But yeah, he's just he's, he's just been absolutely battered for virtually every second of the fight. That's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, I remember speaking to Dave Allen years ago and he lived at the back of me in Cunningsburg and I said, what's he like, him? I, he were comparing him. I think I, I got him to come out on asylum one night, if you remember, and he said, in the clinchers, when he sparred Joshua, because he's done hundreds of rounds with Joshua, I think he brought Dave's nose five times, he says, Joshua were big and hollow and he couldn't bully Dave in the clinchers. Joyce were like a juggernaut in clinchers. He says, but... Daniel Dubar, Dave says he was just like an oak tree. And he says he'd never been up close and tried to move somebody. Because Dave were like carrying a bit of weight then, you know, six foot three, probably 19, 20 stone. He said he couldn't, he couldn't budge him in any, he were like solid. He said he's the strongest man he's ever been up close with trying to move. And I was thinking to myself then, wow, I bet he can punch that kid. And we've seen, haven't we? He can crack, can't he? Absolutely, yeah, and you know Daniel Dubois really at twenty seven is still quite a, quite a young man. You can yeah. say what you want about him. Did he as he quit twice? Possibly, um, maybe the case, but just building experience along the way. But I think that he does it. You, you could see there on Saturday. There's two. There's two fellas, right? One's got the world on the the uh, world on his shoulders, the eyes of the world on him. Daniel Dubois. You can just imagine Daniel Dubois never been on Twitter. N- doesn't look at YouTube comments, never been on Instagram. Like, seriously, you can just see that is in his in his persona and, and it's paid off. I mean, it wasn't that much of a shock that Daniel Dubois won. I think it was the, the manner that he, he did do it was probably quite shocking to see AJ basically banjoed on the floor. But the the, the story that has been told or tried to be told by you-know-who, the, the yeah. usual suspects after the fight, is just, as Porky would say, craziness. Like, a, a genuinely... Is mad. I've never known someone who's lost get so much um, attention or take up so much of the of the column the column inches. It's yeah, obviously AJ was the A side going into it, but it's not like this is his first defeat. We've we've been here before um, on yeah. three occasions. Really, it's just it's just mad how they've managed uh, what they're trying, what they're attempting to do, and it just. The main conclusion for me is it just shows that how much of a one-man company matchroom boxing is and has been for a while. I know that's not a, that's not rocket science to say, but it just it has just shown this week how much AJ focused they are. I look at it like this, right? The bubble for me burst when he fought Vladimir because they were all set for Wilder. They flew Wilder over. They paid him a big fee, first class travel, put him in Hilton in a penthouse, Hilton International at Wembley, and they said. Anthony Joshua or Vladimir Klitschko will fight Wilder next, the winner. So Joshua won, but he didn't look fantastic against an old man who'd been 18 months on Seti, approaching 42 years of age, a couple of months before he was 42. And he made hard work of it with him. And I think Eddie then thought, God, what, how we can't put him in with Wilder now? Because if he gets it, he's going to go and he'll end up on Button Moon. And I think the writing were on the wall then. I think what they did, they wrapped him in. I don't think they planned to do this. I thought they were going to let him off the leash. I thought they, he, they thought they were going to take Vladimir out early. The writing were on the wall then. They wrapped him on, up in Cornwall then. They thought, we're just going to have to protect this kid here and milk him. They'd already signed Luis Ortiz, Smido. Mm. Everybody said, oh, they're going to put him in with Luis Ortiz. What did they do? They put Dave Allen in with Luis Ortiz. And they put... Uh, he, he went in, obviously, with Vladimir, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? And... It, it was wrong, wasn't it, really? Do you know what I mean? And they protected him from then. And I thought they knew something that we didn't about his chin. So it goes back to amateurs. David Price put him on Button Moon. Lawrence O'Coley, Daniel Dubar, Dylan White knocked him out in amateurs, didn't he? So he's he's had problems with his chin all the way through his career. And they've navigated him and they've used social media and all these casual fans and all these YouTubers that have got access, they all know the dance. 
If you want looking after, free tracksuits, free food at hotel lobbies and all that, and all the buffets at the media days, and that, if you want access, because don't forget these YouTubers, they can get up to thirteen, fourteen hundred pound on their YouTube channels with a good interview with Joshua or Eddie Hills. Do you see where I'm coming from? So they're not going to want to rock the boat, are they? These YouTubers. So they've all played the part in it. And yeah. now all I want them to ask is this proper questions about what's gone on. But we're not going to get that, are we? Somebody should be putting them on, on them about these rematches and challengers getting rematches and rematches for mandatories. Do you know what I mean? A mandatory yeah. fight is something that you work up to. What about the next guys in line? Because it's holding the divisions up. Nobody's asking these questions. That's been my argument, and I've probably based my channel on that. Do you know what I mean? And gone after them. But they're not going to give me the kudos. So let's somebody else ask these questions. But this Charlie Parsons kid, he started out, didn't he, in boxing, starry-eyed and asking proper stuff. He was soon buttered up, wasn't he? Coogan has never really been that guy, a boxing guy. He's been used from day one because he's always had main access, hasn't he? So Rob Tebbett were asking the question. They soon got rid of him, didn't they? As soon as he started to ask anything, challenge him. They reckon that Gully, he's a copper, by the way, boxing king media, but they reckon he's asking challenging questions. Yeah, but he don't go really after him, and he'll he'll soon be put to put aside. You see where I'm coming from? If you start pushing it, so who's going to ask these questions? The gad didn't. Simon Jordan started out good. He ain't. So where, where are we? They've all played a part in it. And now that the mates were bricked up and that, nobody's going to point anything out, are they? Because they're all as one, aren't they? Seriously. Oh, it's incestuous. It's it's horrible. I mean, you've what? been talking about that for years, Porky. You've been talking about that game. And that's an old, old different subject. But on Joshua, I don't criticise Joshua as, as an individual because we don't actually hear that much from Joshua it's the it's the story that's told around him from the chief suspect you know the 4-0 4-0 Iceman from Billerica um, you know they're, they're the ones that, cre that create the story around him I've never known someone whose um, media uh, coverage popularity with the casuals etc has so far outweighed the talents and what we've actually seen him deliver in the ring what we've seen him deliver in the ring is much better than I could ever do. He's done fantastic. Mm. But he's there, and the, the coverage he's getting from the, like, say, from the media, the popularity, the endorsements, the sponsorships, the hype, it's just far outweighs what he's actually achieved in the ring. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, I'm not criticizing Joshua as, a, as an individual, um, but he has just never been as good as what the, like, I've tried to explain what the media and the hype thinks that he is um but i mean what they've what they've managed to come out with since um since the weekend is mad like you know and we know we were talking about but he's been saying it's the first time he's been knocked out which is obviously a lie he's been stopped by ruiz obviously this was the first time he was you know banjoed on the floor um you know he enjoyed the fight i think i think he enjoyed it and then we're looking at december the 21st let's wait until december the 21st so but are they hoping Hills and Joshua? Are they hoping that Tyson Fury loses on December the twenty first, so it can be loser against loser, or even worse, are they hoping that Fury can win and then put try and angle Joshua in with Fury off the back of being banjo by Dubois? I mean, it, it, I just don't get it. Well, how can these sanctioning bodies do that? Because it'd be coming off a loss, wouldn't it? You have to, don't you have to have a win? Well, they they can all get. Uh, but then they'll say that they don't need sanctioning bodies. That it's a big fight anyway. I just, I, and what what it's done really, what it's done is taken a lot of the spotlight away from Dubois. Now Dubois doesn't want the spotlight or won't ask for it, but he deserves immense credit for what he did. He's gone out in front of all them people on the biggest night of his life with question marks over him and his heart and his chin, and, and he's produced the best performance of, of his life. Really announced himself on the top table, and no one's talking about him. We're all talking about the other, the other fella. It's just a bit strange to me. He's don't forget. Uh... He, he's the draw in he, Joshua. He's he's coming out second, and yeah. he, he's not even the champion, and he's got rematch clauses. And yeah, I'm not for that. I'm not for that. You know what? Coming he out second, get that's... The rematch him. You know, I mean, he's that off the pace now. It, it, it's dangerous, but it's his own fault because since Usyk done him that second time, he's just more or less been fighting people. Well, two of them had sparred. One of them had had one fight previous as a pro, and the other one that Franklin. I mean, Franklin, uh, Elenius, Wallin, and then Garno in his second fight. They're shockers. They're, they're not, I'm back where I belong, stronger, faster, quicker than the speeding bullet, all that. 
They're just treading water fights. He's not challenging himself. Whereas the other kid. I didn't mind the Wallin. I didn't mind Wallin. No. Franklin, not for me. Franklin had obviously been beat by White. I didn't mind Wallin because, you know, he'd give a good go to uh, Fury yeah. and I think he'd had another good win in between. Um, if I remember right. Five years before, though, that one at Smith or the Wallin. Yeah, it was. It was. And But Ungarnu, I mean, obviously that's, that's for the money. Yeah, and yeah. and let's remember, we can all be clever after the event. Yeah. And Gonu caused Tyson Fury all sorts of problems. Did, now we can yeah. it, so that you know we can say that Fury wasn't in shape or whatever, but that's what we saw in the ring. He caused him all sorts of problems, and then Joshua banjoed him. So that makes a nice story. Now we're not saying Ngarno's a world beater, but that makes a nice story. But yeah, he's he's obviously got found out on Saturday. Adam Smith, uh sorry, sorry, not Adam Smith, that's you, isn't it? <laughs> sorry. Daniel other, the, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, Joe Joyce and Usyk are his defeats. But they were undefeated, so he's got to be given credit for going in with them to bar. And he's fought Miller. I don't really count that as a win. 24-stone fat man. But he got he, he has caused people problems at past Miller, but he's more of a gimmick fighter, isn't he? Now, Ergovic, yeah, he's a talker. Uh, Olympic bronze, that's a good win, a good solid win. Joshua didn't want to fight him, did he? They kept swerving him. So that's a good win. So for him to do him... He's he's been testing himself against good guys, whereas Joshua is treading water. And you could see it written all over Joshua's face when he walked out to that ring. He knew he was going to be in for an hard night, didn't he? Either he'd not done the training or what, I don't know. But I did hear rumours from people who, who I know who were involved with him a few years ago that he'd stopped doing running altogether when he was with McCracken. So if you stop doing your road work then... There's David a did this to do What McCracken that. does... He's not one of them like Joe Gallagher and, and people like Mick Whale, where they'll go out in car and they'll, they'll rather uh, Robin Reed's trainer, Brian Hughes, God bless his soul. He's not with us now, but they watch their kids doing the running in in, in the car. Do you know what I mean? They stop every mile, then they run by and, and they're, they're more or less hands on trainers. McCracken don't believe in that. He believes you turn up for your training session. If you can't do your run, you're not, you're not, you're not, I don't want to know. You do that yourself. That's up to you. If you're not fit. That's like Froch. Fro like Froch. If you don't Froch used running, to do That's it. Well, Froch used to do it with that Adam, didn't he? His mate. Yeah. So yeah. it would push him because he wasn't a big, a big uh, fan of running, Carl. But he did his six mile every morning. So Joshua's not been doing that. So I'm wondering if tail's wagging dog now, and a bit like Nazim Ahmed, he stopped doing all that. You think you're better, don't you? And Fury, I've heard were starting to do his runs, but they were like little trots and that. Oh, we've done it, we've done it, but have you done it at a pace? Frotch used to do his 36 minutes. God, if it, if it, anything slower than that, he were thinking, what's going on here? That first Groves one, he was doing it in 38, 39 minutes, and I think he was starting to think to his son, I'm coming to end here. And I've had this conversation on my channel with Clinton Woods where I was cutting corners, you know, towards the end of his career. And it comes to them all, to them all doesn't it? Well, you kick on that bend and it just isn't there. Do, do you know what I mean, kind of thing? And I'm starting to wonder if Joshua knew when he was coming out to that ring, do you know what? I'm going to get beat here tonight because they know in the reds if they've done that camp, don't they? You look in the mirror, don't you? Julian McGowan used to say on here, you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, man in the mirror moment, have I done everything? See where I'm coming from? I don't think he has. And know. there's only one person knows. Joshua. There's only one person that knows if he's done everything, everything and that's Joshua. But Joshua. in the fight, Paul Kerr, he had his hands, he had his hands so far down yeah. for the first not down. He had he had his hands way down. Um I know that I know that and Ben Davison um splits opinion, of course. He's had plenty of stick from, from yours truly. Um but um it's always it's always easy to take a dump on people after after they've lost or been part of a loss like Ben Davidson. But you know he would look like he was doing a good job with with Joshua. I know you you would argue that Davidson's only picked up fellas that have already got the foundations and he's yeah, taken yeah. them on at a later stage in the career. Joshua Joshua being one of them, Billy Joe, uh, Taylor, oh, others. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's easy to um it's easy to criticize them after a loss. But I mean, look. It's an age-old story in boxing, in it. You get beat, you train, you change the training you set up. You know, McCracken got the blame. Then they had that um, the um, Mexican American Angel fella. Then they've had Virgil Clayton. Hunter. That yeah, I'm... yeah. I mean, look, it's only there's only one man to blame, really. Yeah, there's only one man to blame, really. You can you know you can change the wallpaper, but you know it's only it's only the one man to blame, really, in the middle of it. He's had seven trainers, Joshua. Now, who do you think he's eight? Where do you... 
Well, it's like Matt Macklin. He used to change trainer, didn't he, after every one? But I mean, um, where do you where do you think he, he goes now? That well, actually, twofold, Porky. Where do you think Joshua goes? But let's concentrate on Dubois as well. Where do you think he goes next if it's not the rematch? I think the rematch is a joke. I mean, who needs a rematch? Fella's been knocked down five times. He's been absolutely wiped out on the floor. Rolling, rolling, could hardly get up doing a doing a break dance, but yet that apparently deserves a rematch. He's been down twelve times, has he? Or is it eleven? It's something like that. And in his pro career, he's been down he's Ruiz and this one, and then Vladimir had him down. Then all them times in amateurs and sparring. So if you've, you can't, he's got muscles everywhere, hasn't he? But you can't put muscles on that beard, can you? So he's obviously got a problem now. When Peter Fury started training Tyson Fury, he'd been down and he'd been knocked down in sparring and being down as a pro. Peter developed a style so he ne- so he c- could protect that chin. Now, when Peter and him parted, Tyson's been down a lot, and he's since then. So I think, is it a balance thing or is it the chin with Joshua? What what do you think it is? I think it's his chin, me. Yeah, but I would I would say chin, but. I don't necessarily criticise fighters, particularly heavyweights, too heavy you go down. If Daniel Dubois it's any human being on the planet with a, with a full-on right hand, they're going to go down. <laughs> he would put me into next week. I won't get up for a week if Daniel Dubois hit me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a criticism. Yeah. It's just how they deal with that, why it's happening. Are they getting older? Are they getting slower? Um, mm-hmm. So, so yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, to me, his career's in absolute tatters. Yeah. Yeah, Hill Hills has painted a picture like he's still the biggest name in British boxing, and we're going to wait for to see what happens on December the twenty first. Now Frank Smith is saying he's going to be a three time champ. They're holding on to that punch he caught in week fifth. Oh, is that where we're going to be at now? Is Joshua pay per view now? Probably because of commercial value, and they'll not put him on non pay per view. Is he pay per view? Yeah, they'll do that. But are they hanging on for dear life? For the fact that if they put him in Dubar again, they're going into it where we might get a lucky punch. Oh my God! And and if it don't happen, you asked me earlier, where do I think he goes next? I think Dubar will fight Parker or one of them underneath yeah. him in IBF, and I think good, Joshua good fight, will yeah. Miller. They want a gimmick fight, some new Dubar's for. They might still have that rematch if Turkey lets them have it, but I think they'll go for Miller and try and finish him quicker than Dubar, and then we'll say, well, we beat him quicker than Dubar. They're going to have to try and. Throw something back at Dubar, like we've done Miller and I might go for Ergovic. Do you see where I'm coming from? Or Miller, Dubar's yeah. leftovers to try and prove a point, to try and sell it. Because they've got to try and sell a rematch. At the moment, they're going to have problems selling it to fans because the average casual fans now even are even saying, well, why does it warrant a rematch? Like, remember right. what you said about Boutte? Froch done him at done Boutte in Nottingham, didn't he? Wrote him off, right? I other day said Boutte quit. He didn't quit technically in the ring, but he had it beaten out him. He didn't want it anymore, did he? So that's what I meant to that guy that was seen that I got that wrong. Uh, in my opinion, he did quit, but not like quit as in on his stool kind of thing. Yeah. He, quit, yeah. He, he, he had enough. He had enough. He had enough. Now, yeah. Eddie said there's a rematch clause for Boutte, which they are, because they like two bites at Cherry. And he, they all thought Frotch were going to get beat, didn't they? So they were giving him two paydays, one in England, one in Canada. But he didn't warrant a rematch, Eddie said, because of what happened. This was an even worse shallocking of the five rounds, wasn't it? This Joshua one. So why why can Eddie say, yeah, we'll take the rematch? Of course they're going to take it for that Bunsen burner, aren't they? But even the casual fans are saying, why is, why is it a rematch? And when you've got talk sports screaming about it, there's a problem, isn't there? Because they've been up his arse, haven't they, for two years? Do you know what I mean? So away, if you take Conor Ben out of the equation, who is um who's who's Matchroom's second biggest name in the UK? Katie Taylor, isn't it? I oh, thought yeah, But she did she didn't she fight on a I mean, Logan Paul show last time that Matchroom weren't involved in? Yeah. So I, I mean no really the go, who've they got? I mean, Bricktop seeing Eddie Hills off, we aren't spending a penny. I'm lining this <laughs> pocket. <Yeah. isn't> it? <laughs> I mean yeah. Turkey turned around and he said you can go back to Dart said you didn't he? or something like that. Yeah. I saw some cut somebody quoted on stuff. What I found what I found weird. This week they've said that Joshua has got one fight left with Ridia season. So who's he? Who's he signed to? Matchroom, Turkey. Who, I mean, we all know who's running the show. It's just, yeah, the old Wilder. Yeah, the, the, for Wilder, the top, he's spent, spent, isn't he? Yeah, I mean the top level, the top level sand. But look at this weekend. It, it, it never showed this weekend in Yorkshire. It's it's guff. It's absolute crap. Um, so from a you know from a Matchroom UK perspective, not a lot going on. 
I mean, I was looking at Dennis's show on 1st of October and it's the lowest ranked show he's ever put on in 27 years and having a boxer's <laughs> license. I mean, there's guys on there. What, with boxer yeah. ranking? Yeah. So, yeah, it's his lowest one, Dennis. And he'll be devastated with that show, Dennis. But the, 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 there's slim pickings for him now, isn't it? It's hard, yeah, it's hard. Everybody who's 10 and 0 or 12 and 0, they're all waiting for the Saudi phone call. They're all saying, well, if Liam Cameron can get on there after a four-year drugs ban... We can get on. So everybody's parked up, aren't they now, waiting for the lottery ticket. You see what I'm mm. coming I don't mean lottery ticket as in big dough, but nobody's on there less than six figures. You know what I mean? Mm. Which yeah. is good because normally they'd be getting five grand. Now they're getting 90s and 80s and hundreds. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which is good good for them. I'm, I'm pleased for Fice. I'm pleased for Liam. You know, he'll be able to buy his house and that now, put him to buy his house. So that's good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Because he's had a tough time, but... Everybody's parked up waiting for a phone call and trying to please everybody and lick our soul. That's what's going on, mate. Yeah, so- but say when <laughs> when Turkey's had enough and he's done his he's done his job of, re- of promoting rid of your season, what does that leave us with in the UK? Not there's not a lot. It doesn't oh. leave us with a lot. Lee Wood's halfway out at the door. Oh. Warrington got beat again at the at the weekend. We've got women's boxing that's not taken off with the mass market, even though they're propping up shows left, right, and centre. What are we left with, really? Nothing really. Where's this next generation? What happened to them McCormick's? McCormack's and all that. And is Ben Whitaker the next big noise? Because he's got no pop in his punches, has he? Do you know what I mean? Where, where's these where's this next big star coming from? Lawrence Acoli don't get a mention. He's a two-weight champion. He's got a WBC belt at home. Nobody mentions him. Jack Massey's fighting Opetia. Why are these YouTubers not interviewing Jack Massey about that? It's because he's a Joe G fighter and Joe G don't get on with Eddie Hills. All these media people, they're the, they've all played the part in this, you know, Smidho, because they're giving certain people the big ups. Joshua shouldn't even be spoke about now. He should be finished with all these YouTubers, but they're hanging out at the back of him. Why can't we move on? Oh, to last week far? was embarrassing. Last last week was embarrassing, mate. You got Dylan Moore. I didn't think it could get any worse than the gad running around fight week, getting in other people's interviews. While it did get worse because we've got Derek Chisora doing it, he's got Dylan, no, re- no relevance. Dylan Chisora, 41 year old in November. And Dylan White sat... He's been beat 13 times. Eh? 13 times. Yeah. He's been beat 13 times, Derek Chisora. But, yeah, we've got them running around. And then they're saying... Oh, one YouTuber will say, oh, well, did you see what Ben Shalom said about you? Yeah, did you see what Frank said about you? Did you... It's, oh, no, no, it's boring, man. It's boring. Do you want to see Dylan against Derek a third time? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Two Dylan big, fat whales. Is Dylan serving? Yeah, Dylan serving a silent ban. Conor Ben's coming to the end of his silent ban, or not not very silent. I t- and I'll tell you what'll happen there eventually, and because Hills is getting quieter and quieter on the Conor Ben situation. Remember, he was doing an interview a day about it to start with. I wouldn't be surprised if Conor, Conor and, and Hills didn't do any business again together. Maybe maybe yeah. one, because I think they've got one fight left, but they I think they will part ways. I think Hills has had enough of that situation. Um, yeah, and people are just losing people are losing interest and his name is Muck. Connor Ben's name is Muck. Yeah, it's honestly, mate. Do you know, the, the the main thing is about it, right? First you're angry, then you're upset, then you look for somebody to blame, don't you? And I think Connor Ben is now thinking, do you know what? I've been badly advised here by Charlie Sims, Eddie Hills, Spotty Frank, Tony Sims, all that. And I can see all that lot parting and going at each other. Yeah. Because money can. People do crazy things, don't it, Smith? Yeah. I can see him parting, but I wouldn't necessarily, and I could be completely wrong, I wouldn't necessarily think that Hills can take all the blame for the advice. I think Conor Ben's done some stuff some stuff wrong on his own back. I think maybe his dad's involved, maybe his own so-called team's involved. So I don't think Hills can get the full blame for that one, although you know many people would like to do so. But yeah, it's a very fractious and strange situation. But yeah, we're coming up two years. Um, silent ban, over. Simon Jordan made a good point when he dug Eddie, Hill, Eddie Hills out about the Conor Ben situation. And I'd, I kind of got the impression that he knows a little bit of something that he might have heard. Yeah, I do. They're not, they're not getting on and all that because there doesn't seem to be no coming back from Eddie regarding him. He's gone quiet on him, hasn't he? And I, I'm thinking to him, yeah. you know what? I bet he's looking to blame Eddie Hills now and thinking that he's out of equation because Conor Ben will be gagging to get that Saudi money, won't he? Because they're greedy, aren't they, Ben? They're money motivated. And I think we're going to see something with them where they, they, they fell out. I do want to say, I really, really do, but we'll see, won't we? But well, then you... the ban? Yeah, of course he does. He's failed twice. You can't just sweep that away. And all them wins that he had, 
that, that pe- when he were knocking people out with freakish power, and a lot of them in that gym was all of a sudden turning their careers around, weren't they? And then all of yeah. a sudden, yeah. they can't knock an N over. Yeah, or well, not been seen since. You know, they went, they went. You know, who was it? Felix Cash went ages without fighting after the Ben thing, and um, the other fellow who's, who's in there, Richards, is it? Um, I used to like Conor Ben because he came from a position of, um, you know, uh, very much learning on the job, no amateur background as such. Um, he was trying to improve. He was improving, talking a good game. But obviously, this has unravelled his, his whole career. Um, I don't think he was ever going to be a, a, an amazing world beater. Might have nicked a world title at some stage. But I was for Conor Ben, but he's, he's fell apart now, obviously. Smido, do you think that Conor Ben, what they'll do with him, Eddie will say, do you know what? You've got one fight left with me. They're going to throw him in against somebody that he's got no chance of beating and give him his payday and then just jog him on. See, I don't know because I think that the the because he's been out of action for so long to, to UK eyes, are they that interested? Would he if Conor Ben headlined at the O2 against I don't know, an international an American fighter, would it be that popular? It's definitely not pay-per-view. Um, and I think that Eubank looks at it. Obviously, everyone's always going to talk about the Eubank fight, but I think Duke. Junior looks at it as if to say, "F you, I'm not. For, I'm not fighting Conor Ben. He's he's not happy of how the first situation was dealt with. He doesn't necessarily want to give him the payday. So, although it's an obvious fight to happen because of the money involved, and it could well happen, I think Eubank would be reasonably content with himself if it was to never happen the Ben fight. That's not to say it won't happen, but yeah. I think Eubank's not. Conor Ben's chasing it. I don't think Chris Eubank Junior is chasing it. No. Uh, okay. Well, we'll finish off on this. Uh... Big Malk, the Big Malk situation. What, uh, what did you make out of a Big Malk's fantasy stories? <laughs> Who's, what do I know this? Do I know about this? Uh, do I know about this? Spencer Fearon came out, didn't he? And basically, he invented some stories and caused lots of problems behind the scenes regarding uh, Dubois and Don Charles and that. He basically oh, that's he put, right. he's put them together and he wants a feed, doesn't he? Don Charles and Debar, he's squealing for his phone. He looks like they've shunned him, doesn't it? Both right. parties. Big Malk, I've just got onto why you're calling that now. Yeah, I like it. Um, no, he's not for me. He's not a character for me. Never has been. Um, although I do, do like that Big Malk. That's good. Uh, no, he's never been for me. He, he said Oscar Rivers has failed a test as well. He's just a plonker. He, he's an absolute plonker. He's, he's hanging on. He's trying to get his slice of the cake. Um, I think he's an irrelevant. Um, there was rumours, wasn't there, last week about the Dubois and Don Charles, but he was there on the night. They got the win. Um, yeah, I've, yeah, I've written, fired on got him, any interest really? in what... Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he lost his job, didn't he, at Sky for the Oscar Rivers comment, and so and he's still not learned, has he? But Christopher Eubank Jr. said what he said. You've probably seen that, didn't you? And then they've all got their heads together within 12 hours and everybody's apologising and they're all friends. Yeah. In it. So who do you think yeah. got them together? Do you think somebody's just grabbed them both and said, sort this out? You think well, no, because they, 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 both, well, I know what Frank's like, but both Frank and Eddie said it will be dealt with, so along the lines of legal letters and all that. Um, but yeah, the one thing you, I mean, everyone can get behind what Eubank said, calling everyone scumbags. scumbags. That's fine, absolutely fine by me. The one thing I would say, though, he said that, oh, Callis Howland locked me into a ridiculous contract for, for uh, two years. Well, Eubank, when Eubank signed that contract, he wasn't a young man. He's obviously got the old fella knocking about as well who knows his way around the game. So you signed that contract with Callis Howland. So that's your fault. You're not a, tw- a 20-year-old that's been tied up. You was 30-odd at the time. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's your fault for signing that contract. You should have known better. The 35 this week, is but, I mean... I mean, look again. Someone that's again. you know, um, just just not delivered. Just not delivered. Um, just not delivered. Uh, he was again never was never going to be a, 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 the world's best. Um, but you know, in entertaining fights, talks a good game. But it's just never ever delivered. And he's fighting some plonker next weekend that I've never heard of. Conor Ben's twenty eight this month, and so is Eubank. So twenty eight and thirty five. They're knocking on now, aren't they? These gimmick fighters, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Turkey. Do you think do you think he's going to take over? And, and do you think they're selling the souls? These promoters are selling us down river. I think it looks like that eventually. Um, I had a controversial thought last week, um, and I texted a couple of people. What would be funny is if the, um, it turned out to be Turkey turned out to be a fake shake. Remember the one that was there. Uh, uh, with Sven Goran Eriksson on the on News of the World all them years ago. And he's got no money. And because um, and he would just completely bankrupt UK boxing and it would be it would be just finished. 
Um, but yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying that is happening. But that that was just a thought that crossed my mind. Um, I don't. I mean, like I say, Puckett, my hardcore days are long, long gone. Yeah. Um, if there's a good fight on, I'll put it on. I don't care what channel it's on. I don't care who's promoting it. I've, I don't really care. I would just, I'm not watching any build up. I'll just turn on as the ring walking, watch it, and then turn off, and then maybe a week later speak to you. That's it. Don't you watch the uh, build ups and all that now, Smith? Are you, are you no. not bothered? No. Is Ozzy no. the same? No, I'll no, tell you what happened. Or Ozzy, um, same, yeah, I've just same. been. I think Ozzy does. I think Ozzy still still would be into it. He's obviously more into the domestic scene. But yeah, long ago, I mean, I used to watch fights on re- replay, get up in the middle of the night. I used to book days book days off, watch the Russian cards and stuff like that on Box Nation yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've, I've been to quite a few places. But yeah, it you just grinds Dale you down somewhere? over time. Didn't you and Dale go somewhere? We were. Me and Dale was me and Dale went to Hamburg to watch Hay and Klitschko. We was ringside in Wolverhampton to watch a uh, prize fighter one year. Um, that uh, Gwyn, I think, uh, the Welsh fellow Gwyn won. Um, so yeah, but, the, the, but times change, don't they? As you know, with work and yeah, kids yeah. and that and responsibilities. But yeah, I mean, I will tell you what happened, and I don't mind admitting it. During COVID, the UFC stole my boxing fandom and and they was just with what they were doing it was it's so dead easy to follow they was the only sport on pretty much at the time during covid and they converted successfully converted me and i think millions of others into ufc fans during that covid period and i don't mind admitting that you watch ufc smith oh yeah 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 i do yeah they all fight yeah. each yeah, other do. don't Absolutely. that's the good thing isn't it they all fight each other yeah. and yeah. there's none of that yeah. Yeah. The nonsense that we're giving this, you know, he said, she said, and all that. I mean, that yeah. day before yesterday with Bricktop and Eubank were pretty embarrassing, yeah. weren't it, really? Yeah, yeah. Think- but it's what the the YouTube lot that they it's fodder to them. They absolutely lap that up. They love that kind of thing, but it's just boring to me now. You know, yeah. I'm a, I'm a coming on a mid age man now, Pucky. I ain't got time for he said, she said. <laughs> Oh, right, I best crack on. No problem. Listen, thanks for coming on, Adam. You've been a thank you. Tonic. You take care and all the best. And um, just before I go, Porky, just before I go, make sure that the listeners are looking out for uh, racers now on YouTube and um, for all their racing tips and horse racing content. Racers now on YouTube. What is that your channel? Yeah, racers what, now. What's yeah. Your, what, what's your Twitter uh, handle, uh, Adam? Uh, mine is uh, Smido Eleven S M I D O One One. S M I D O one one, brilliant. All right, you take care. Have yeah, a great weekend. Me. Thank you. All right, cheers, buddy. See ya. See. Ya. Right. Well, that was Adam Smith from Nottingham. I think he lives in Wigan now. Women love him. Men want to be him. <laughs> no, I hope Mrs. Smith doesn't uh, have a go at me about that. Only, only joking. Uh, that's about it, really. Let's have a look. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, just give a big shout out to Max. Uh, thanks for your text message this morning, Max. While I was on my run, uh, putting the hard yards in. And Terry, thanks very much for that. Uh, feel free to tune in to Terry's Take, episode 90. That should be going up today on this channel. Feel free to have a little look at Porky's International. That's our other YouTube channel where we cover other topics and we're going to be doing some interesting things on there. We're just having to wait to see uh, how we're going to play it. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas what I want to do on there because I've got an opinion on everything really, even Price of Coleman's Mustard. It's <laughs> not worse than getting ripped off, is there? Uh, so that's about it really. So I hope everybody has a good weekend. I've got Jake, com- Jake coming on tonight. I've got a kid called James coming on later. I called him John the other day. It's, it's called James. He used to work for Steve Wood. And I've got, uh, I think Sean's coming back on, uh, for, who came on the other day from Scunthorpe. But I think he might be coming back on tonight. That'll be a late one. Andy's away in Spain, but he'll be back this weekend. Andy, not from Aberdeen, because he said Andy from Aberdeen. But he ain't from Aberdeen, he's from Perth. He's a good friend of mine. We're having, uh, we'll have Andy back on. Uh, Kent will be coming back on, and Jerry at some point. And uh, might even get Burnsy back on. Chris Burns, how are you doing? Pop, pop, bang. All loved up, aren't you now, Burnsy? And I think that's about it. Really. I think I'll be getting Barbara the Blade on, Porky's International. So the schedule is looking good. So there you go. That's about it, really. I think I'm going to do a Tom Platt's leg workout now with my little tiny little uh, 
Olympic bar and no weights on. <laughs> I just use bar me to squat now. I don't put no on and just rip out. I don't think you need to do all that all the heavy weights when you get when you get old. No, it just does your joints in, doesn't it? So I'm just seeing Frotch on fighting this morning. I thought that was funny. I was watching that earlier this morning. So tune into Frotch's channel. Frotch on fighting, the fastest growing channel, as he says. And it is, if you go look on all channels, it's the quickest one as regards views. He does like 100,000 views in about six hours, doesn't he? So, okie dokie. Go on, peace out. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. I want to thank everybody who's been sharing the videos as well on your WhatsApp amongst your pals. Big shout out to Phil Jeffries as well. Jaffa, how are you doing? And Darren, Fano and all them boys up there. Fano loves my channel, Neil Fano. So, all right. Go on, peace out.